987 underscore 12 introduces a new option called set origin and its purpose is to use the power of dots but to set origin so here i'm holding control and rolling dots in box cutter and one of the things i've always thought about using box cutter was how cool it would be to actually use dots in order to place the origin however dots can also be a little variable so if we right click the shape and we subdivide it a couple of times we now have more dots everywhere which will make the following examples a little bit more tricky so using box cutter we're just going to jump over the line box and i'm going to perform a cut and now we have sliced out this area with line box. And the thing is, is what if I wanted to set an origin on this object locally without having to apply everything? Of course I could, uh, let's just shift D, go in local mode and pretend that we were applying this. So let's smart apply. And from here, let's shift S, uh, origin to geometry. Let's press alt text and mirror and we see that that's what we're getting for our origin. So let's press, um, you know, our buddy control comma in order to bring about our origin. And let's try to rotate this thing in order to fit the edge, which we see that, you know, we're probably going to have to eyeball this thing to really get it to work just like we would want to. And this is kind of where um, I found that there was something for us to actually improve in Blender was the ability to create localized transformation based on these sort of scenarios. So let's just delete that and we're back to this object being in a non-destructive state. So let's go under mesh tools and choose set origin. So normally I would be clicking on the dot in the center of this and making that happen. But because I added additional geometry, I wanted to make it a little bit more tricky. And so there's a couple of ways we could go about this. We could right click and cancel. We could go under add modifiers and put a decimate modifier, which will clean the geometry. And then we can go back under mesh tools and set origin. We can set our origin precisely right here. But whenever we press alt X, we're experiencing the same issue as before. So that's where you would want to go under set origin. But instead of actually clicking the dot, you want to drag the dot down to the origin that you want to specify for the rotation. So now if we press alt X, we see that we're able to mirror this and it fits inside the same bounds without sticking out. So that is how easy it is for set origin to actually assist you in your workflow of setting localized origin. So let's set up a trickier case. So I've been actually doing this example quite a bit just in preparation of this particular demo. So now we have this shape and let's go into set origin and we want to set our origin but we can't get a center dot and there's no decimate modifier that can do that of course we could remove certain modifiers from the calculation by playing with what modifiers are being enabled via modifier scroll but that's a bit excessive and this is where we can actually drag from one corner dot to another but instead of it using the orientation that's being specified by the red dot let's press f and specify that dot for the middle but also we're not done yet this is just setting up the location of the object. Let's hold shift and keep it live because the rotation isn't actually applicable. Let's click and drag on this area, creating a straight line. And let's just press R in order to set only the rotation. And once we applied, we now have the rotation happening on this object correctly. And so while we can't mirror this because this object is actually part of a more complex area, we can say use box cutter and it's localized mirror to mirror cut across this thing. So I'm just pressing one and two on the keyboard in order to mirror across these areas. And now I'm able to actually continue working. In fact, in order to prevent myself from having to do it over and over, let's set our start state to be in mirror. And now I'm able to work on this object locally, despite it being a very unique cutout. And so this is what the workflow is all about is because in box cutter and hard ops, we never had a solution for dealing with localized geometry and at least mirroring across it. So this is definitely a big step forward. In fact, let's draw a box across this. And we could of course be using empties for targeting of the mirror and stuff like that in order to get it to point across. But this is definitely a much more intuitive way to work. So let's set ourselves up again. Uh, let's actually turn off mirror and we'll just alt scroll over to line box. And we'll just create a line box here, press X. And so just to show the workflow of using set origin, let's just uh, go under mesh tools and we can click and drag from the first dot to the second. If we look at the bottom, we're setting the location of rotation. I'll press F in order to set our location at least be to median. And really it doesn't matter if we set the rotation because I'm gonna hold shift so I can reuse it a second time. 
and I'm just going to drag from one dot to another dot and press R in order to adjust only the rotation. Only one press of R needed to jump to rotation and we're able to quickly set the rotation. And so now in order to test ourselves, let's go back inside of box cutter, start cutting on the right axis of course. And we see that everything is working exactly as it would be expected. And we're able to continue cutting across this piece despite having very localized orientation going with it. I mean, of course, we can orient and work each side one by one, but being able to mirror across these sort of scenarios via origin reconfiguration is just something that I feel hasn't been done by us yet. So I'm very excited about this aspect. So like I said, with this particular object, we could just go under set origin and just by dragging from here to here, this object is already set and it's already mirrored because this was, I believe our first example. So that means if we turn off mirror inside of box cutter and we start cutting, we should see our shape on the side that, you know, this was our first example. So I forgot which side we actually set up our mirroring on, but we're not even having to use the internal mirroring. So whenever you're dealing with faces like this that aren't particularly clipped out, like we're seeing in the second and third examples, it's actually a lot easier to deal with. And so to really drive the point home one more time, we'll jump over to line box and we'll just bring up a shape. And let's actually bring up a shape that is gonna be really hard to solve. I mean, I've just been bringing up worse and worse cases for us to have to solve when it comes to dealing with our orientation. So for this one, I guess I would need one corner inside and we'll slice it. And so let's select this object and let's set our origin. So I'm gonna select the farthest corner on the back, one of the corners on the front, because that's all we have. We'll press F to set our origin to the middle, but we'll hold shift to keep it live. And we're just gonna drag from one of these dots to another dot to indicate the rotation while pressing R to set the rotation and once we release we now have our rotation set and you can test it by just goofing off with the mirroring like you see me doing there uh, sometimes i'll just mirror it just to see if everything worked out properly i mean once you press alt x just seeing the gizmo pop up will kind of give you a little bit of a clue so now let's press d jump over to box and we'll jump back over to mirror and while we didn't specify explicitly which side is our you know x prime you could usually figure it out by cutting and running into mistakes in this particular workflow. However, in a future update of box cutter, we will be introducing a new panel to kind of streamline the experience and make things a lot more simple for new users who are trying to get acquainted with these things because mirror is definitely a lot different in hard ops than it is in box cutter. And there are some steps we can take to make that a little bit easier for users. So more on that in the future, but for now we're talking about hard ops and the new set origin feature. So here we are just setting our origin and placing our cuts. And even with a portion of a shape, we we're still able to get this thing done. So, you know, let's have a little fun. Let's first turn off mirror because when you cut on the wrong side, when you have mirror enabled and you're not aware of the settings that are actually in place, like for me having both X and Y enabled, it can definitely stand in your way. So here I am cutting off a slice. Let's say we wanted to make this piece some sort of rotation piece. Well, first let's uniquify it, which means that now this piece has unique booleans allowing me to just rip it away. But also we can go under set origin and just grab a dot and point it where we want it to go. And this is now where we'll be rotating it. So there's a lot to set origin. However, we wanted users to be with us on this journey as we take it to its final level. So I hope you all definitely find some use out of the V1. There's been a lot of cases that we tested with this to ensure those definitely of use, but definitely my favorite is being able to just simply draw a shape similar to this, slice it out and just quickly go under set origin and just grab a dot and set my origin. However, in this case, we need to drag this dot to this dot, press F, and that will set the rotation as well, meaning we don't have to hold shift, but when we mirror it, we see that we fall short. So how do we get past this? Well, me, I will just hit it with a decimate, and then we can go in and actually set the origin, grab this dot, drag it here, and whenever we mirror it across, we see that there is no overlap issues happening, indicating that our operation was performed successfully. 
However, of course, we're gonna cut on the wrong side of this, causing us to have to transform the shape. But thankfully we have transformation and we just start getting work working on this particular localized aspect. So there's still a lot more whenever it comes to this aspect, but this is just the beginning of us talking about setting origins inside of hard up. So just keep in mind that if you're trying to locate in Q menu, it's just as easy as having a selection going under your mesh tools and choosing set origin. And from there you're launched into the modal. There's also some additional behaviors that have been taken into account. For example, with this object, we have a pretty weird shape. We could uh, decimate it like I've been showing, but another way that I've been dealing with origins is pressing QOT, which will give us a box. And then I'll press Shift W in order to make it a wireframe. And then I just scale it out a little bit, select both shapes. And then I go under set origin and I just set origin using the box. And from here, I can delete the box. And this object is definitely mirrored to the best of its ability based on the bounce of the shape. As we can see it not flexing here inside of this shape with Z fighting whenever we mirror it. But if we wanted to actually cut across it and keep the asymmetry going, then that is where the mirror modifier is going to come in. And of course, make sure that you cut responsibly by beginning on the proper side. And when it comes to mirror inside of box cutter, one, two, three turns it off and on. Shift one, two, and three will flip the axis for X, Y, and Z appropriately. And of course, keep in mind, whenever it comes to our hotkeys, we have them listed in our end panel. But just like that, we were able to use set origin to allow us to quickly work this area with the degree of symmetry that normally wouldn't be afforded to us by just relocating the origin and actually setting it correctly. And hopefully this has given you some ideas on some creative cases you can use to actually get the most out of set origin and also use secondary objects to specify your origins for either both or your primary objects.